Hello, the game is Wing of Misadventure. In this episode, I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide. I think uh, my previous video covered a lot of tips and some basic guide elements and some gameplay, but I wanted to do an actual, just this video is a guide on how to get started. So first, you want to pick the North American server. Make sure it's not the South American. You want North American. Uh, that's the new server that just released on Steam. After you launch it in Steam, you're going to need to create an account with the game. They just need an email address, they'll confirm it, and that's it, you're good to go. Pick your class slash avatar that you want to play, pick your name, and then you'll start in a game the tutorial. I'll go over the classes at the end of this video if you're interested in my thoughts on the classes. So the first thing when you log in, you're going to want to change some of your options around. I recommend changing some uh, keybinds, uh, changing your video to the correct resolution, and turning down the sound. So you want to go into your video settings and change resolution, full screen or not full screen. The rest you can't mess with. Um, change your music down wherever you want your sound effects. Uh, pick up items. I put the space. That's a big one. You're going to be hitting that a lot. Uh, open inventory and interact are two ones. I like to put that on Q&A. But put them wherever you're comfortable with. Next thing is the map. You're always going to want to check your mini-map. Um, you'll see icons. They're for quests. Um, so your mini-map will always show quests. It'll also always show boss spawns. If you hit M, you can see the thumbnail of the map. They're actually just thumbnails of the actual map image. Like Each map is just like a big piece of artwork. That's the main city. This whole area is the 1 to 50 zone. And then over here is like the 50 plus area. You'll go north to the forest, and as you go away from the city in each direction, the game gets uh, more difficult. And you're basically going to just progress through zones. So when you start, you're going to want to go and start interacting with this quest giver. Get the quest. And this is just like a tutorial. She's just going to show you uh, or tell you to go talk to t three different people and complete their quests or whatever. Um, so you just want to go down here, talk to this person, attack the dummy. Um, if you hit, I think my key bind is J. If you hit J, uh, it'll show you the quest. But if you look, it just it wants you to do normal damage and magic damage. So it wants you to use your basic attack, and then it wants you to use one of your uh, magic abilities. Um, so you, you basically always have every character will have a basic attack and then some abilities. Go ahead and smack on the dummy boss and get both of your damage types filled out. You'll notice the quest turned gray when you completed it. Just go and turn that in and head to the next person. This quest is pretty simplistic. It's just they want you to go into your inventory, so hit I. Or actually, if you change your keybinds, it would be E and equip your two pieces of gear. Um, it won't let you progress unless you've talked to her again, so don't let that confuse you. Mission complete, we head down to the next person. I think she gives you a ring as well, just equip that. All this equipment is you know, meaningless, you're gonna replace it in less than 10 minutes anyway. All right, so this next person just wants to, um, just wants you to kill some monsters. Um, just go ahead and go down, kill the monsters. You know, grab any loot. That, that they drop if they drop a little bit better of a sword or you know something just equip it go ahead and grind on some mobs play around with your skills get the quest done once you get all the kills done go turn it into the the person that just gave it to you and then head back up to the top to the very first person again talk to them and we'll teleport to the town Alright, so now we're in the main city here. I'll pull it up on the map. That's the main city, and we came from up here in the tutorial island. Uh, first, you want to talk to this NPC here, AI. Uh, she'll give you your first quest to get you started. Then you want to go into this portal um, right here. Uh, this is like the main building where you're going to get your main quest, your daily quests and stuff. Um, so this guy, when you're at a higher level, will give you your daily, uh, main quest. This is your mission board where you'll get your daily quest from. But right now, we just want to kind of come up and start this quest line from over here. Now, this is what confused me. I never even knew about this guy. I'm running all over the place. I didn't find him until later, so... Uh, but he's definitely an important character. 
And this bookshelf over here, right here, is um, is key to one of the other quests, which gets a lot of people uh, messed up. But we'll get into that in a little bit. So head on back out, and then we're going to stroll around to the different points in the town. I'm going to try fast forward it a little bit. I don't want to cut scenes so you don't get confused as to how to get there. Uh, but I'll just kind of fast forward to the different areas through the town. All right, so we're just going to head down this path. You can see here, here's a player vendor. You can set up a shop to sell items. Uh, you don't have to be online to sell items. Once you set up your shop, if you quit the game, um, your shop will stay in game until the server resets. Um, here is a Eldrick. This is a companion that you can earn in game. Uh, companions are combat pets. So I have this one. You'll get into a quest. This is Groot. I mean Nump, but he's like Groot. You get him free, um, and then the one that person was selling is uh, this other one here, which is like a melee pet that drops from a boss. Um, so those two are obtainable in the game. Uh, if you look over, you'll see these dragons that these other players got sitting next to them. That's some that you can buy from the cash shop right here. And this blue little portal crystal thing down here um, that you can set your bind point there. Don't set your bind point right now. Uh, you want to kind of keep it up there by the quest givers for now. That's for later when you're binding in different cities. And you'll have to forgive me. I use a lot of old school MMO terminology. So bind means respawn point. So when you die, that's where you'll end up at. So up here we have the uh, vendor. So this is like the only vendor where you can sell goods at. Um, she sells she shells. No, she sells these uh, potions. They're teleportation potion. One teleports you to the city. One teleports you to the bind. When you get money, pick up one or the other. I like the cities. Right here is where you access your bank. It's a pretty big bank. Um, probably two of these screens worth of materials is what you can store there. I'm just picking up some gear for this character because this is a new character. So I'm just seeing what I have in here for when I was playing before that, you know, might uh, be useful. Um, like, you'll get a lot of gray drops. And then the next level up is green is next better equipment. And then yellow is next tier. And then blue is like the top tier. Um, there's actually 13 different tier levels. But as far as color rarity for items, there's gray green yellow then blue all right and just so you're aware my character is going to seem a little op that's because i'm twinked out this weapon here has 206 neutral damage and it can be equipped at level zero so a new character could use it which is this is basically a level 40 or 50 weapon that a level one player can use so my character is going to seem really op it's not the class i'm, I'm a little geared out but what we got to do here is go through the city. I was heading up to the forest and I forgot. Um, you just got to go to each portal point and talk to the guard, right? So we got to go to um, south, east, and north. This is the south guard. Just talk to him and then move on. And on our way to the North Guard, we want to make a stop here and talk to this little girl who wants us to find her doll. So the guy in the first office wants us to get information about her. She wants to get a doll before she gives us information. Um, this is a quest that a lot of people uh, have problems with. So here's the North Guard, and then we want to head up um, and look at this statue. Find Lao, what is it, Chim's statue. So I guess he's like the founder or something. So you just stand here. You'll get to interact. Complete it when you interact with it. And then we're going to head back over to the east uh, gate where the forest is. So this post here, this NPC, is where you can create a guild. Um, it costs uh, 10,000 tamas, which is basically gold. I'll be calling it gold. Um, but yeah, you just type in your guild name, hit create, and boom. That's how easy it is to make a guild and just select your little symbol. So talk to the North Guard here, and then we're pretty much finished with that quest, but we're not going to hand it in just yet. We're going to go ahead into the forest and start the uh, newbie area. This is like the first zone that you're going to go in and fight 
One of the things that throws a lot of new players off is you're going to get a lot of loot. You can just see I walk in, there's loot laying on the ground. Uh, it explodes from mobs at this level. You kill something, four pieces of loot are going to fly out of it. And, and they're all over the place. So, like, look at all this loot, right? And you only got 30 inventory spaces. You get one inventory space per level. So, you know, you level 20 levels, you'll have 30 plus 20. You'll have 50 inventory spaces. So you, your inventory will expand. And But at first, you kind of feel like you're playing, like, an inventory management game. And I think that puts a lot of people off. But it's really, it's honestly, it's you got so much inventory at later levels, it's not a problem at all. Uh, in addition to getting more inventory, um, the amount of loot really goes down. This game, towards the end game, really turns into like a BDO type grindy game. I've never played BDO, but BDO is just known for being very grindy. Um, this game can get like that. So if you enjoy an end game that you got to sit there and farm for stuff, you're probably going to like this game. Um, so if you like 2D graphics, MMO, um, with, with some grind at the end game, you're probably really going to like this. Farming bosses, grinding mobs, grinding experience. Uh, but right now, loot's exploding. And you can see my companion is just destroying all this stuff. He's already, he's level 15, so I had leveled him up before. Companions are count-wide, so you can use them on your alts. And he's just running around ripping stuff, so... The game at this level is a lot more difficult than what it looks in this video. I just want to be completely clear about that. I'm twinked with high level gear. I got a companion that you usually don't get until you're like level 50 or 60. Um, where, you know, you buy for 200,000 gold. And you can actually AFK level with your companions. Once you get Nump, you can just sit there like this and he'll just kill stuff and get you experience. Um, but how you want to clean out your inventory is you can you can mass delete all this stuff or mass sell it just by selecting them. You right click it and it dims out and then you hit destroy and it'll just automatically go through it. So a lot of people don't know about that and they'll sit here and like try to do it one at a time. So let's head up and uh, there's a quest guy right here. We want to grab this quest. I forget what he wants me to do. Ah, he wants to get mushrooms. So mushrooms will randomly drop from monsters in the forest. Just pick them up when you see them. You don't got to hunt specifically for mushrooms. Uh, then we want to come up to this well. This is the doll is here for the little girl. It took me so many hours to find this thing. Like, unless you walk behind a well and hit interact, you'll never know. So there's a doll in your inventory. Be careful. Do not destroy it. Do not sell it. You can't get it again. You'll have to create another character and do the quest real quick and then put it in your bank. All right, so next we want to get the Nump uh, quest started because the first thing you really want to do is get your companion because right now you don't have a companion. I do, but you don't when you get started. So you want to come right up here past the house. Make sure you grab the mushrooms. And right where this Nump is, you want to talk to him. I already have Nump but you can still do the quest. You'll still get another Nump card. Um, that's actually how you level Nump up. So you just talk to him. You can't understand him. Now you got the quest. Okay, now we just want to head back over towards the house and then head across this little bridge here. And that takes us to our next quest giver. Little, um, little pink guy here that tells you to kill some guys. You can't understand him, but to get the quest, you just hit the second line in the first dialogue, and then the third line in the second dialogue. And he just wants you to kill these guys right here, like these light little colored raccoon things. So by now, you'll probably have gotten a couple levels. If you hit K, you can look at your skill points. I have seven. I could level these skills up, and it tells you what it does. But the, the leveling them up usually doesn't do a lot. It's usually like a half a percent more, a little bit more damage, cooldown reduction. My advice is do not spend any of your points. Don't spend them until you know what you're doing, you know exactly what you want to spend them in, you know, until you can research it online or get some advice, or you can figure out the gameplay style of your avatar slash class. Um, respects are not free right now. They, they're talking about maybe doing it once a month or allowing a free one, but right now they cost $7. The price might go down a little bit. But um, skill points are valuable. You don't have enough for everything. So my advice, hold off on spending points till you know what you're doing or know what you want to do. So right down here, we're going to see a dandelion, level 0 dandelion. 
Uh, when you see them, I would recommend just stopping and grabbing them. Um, it levels up your alchemy, and you're going to need them for a quest later on. You're going to need 20, 100 of them. I believe you're going to need 100 of them to make 100 potions. So you'll notice these little uh, gold mobs every once in a while. Um, they just give you more experience is all they do. So you'll see stars, one star, two star, three star, they show up as gold. They're, they're just like experience boosted mobs. So when you see starred mobs, you know, and you're looking for experience, kill them. In these early levels, loot's flying out. You're going to see plenty of legendary masterwork, the yellow ones. Um, by the time you leave here, you'll probably have like a full set of yellows. Um, loot is very easy to come by early on. Just grab whatever, grab whatever greens and yellows and upgrade as you go along. Bang, another yellow right there. They just drop like candy on these early levels. Here comes the double yellow. One... And two. <laughs> I just... You never see them at high levels. Uh, you can farm for an hours and not see a yellow drop. So we have our mushrooms that he asked for. We're going to hand that in, and then we're done with this guy. He just tells us we can make potions. Um, but that's it for quests for him. I just wanted to show you in this area, this named mini-boss spawns. Um... <laughs> He, he has a little bit of a different name than the other ones. He's a little bit tougher. Um, he drops special loot for a quest. Of course, I killed him and didn't even realize it was him, so I didn't even check his loot this time. So we kill the 15, you Tony, come back to this little guy, hand that in. We're done with him, then we're quest from him. I just wanted to point this location out. This is the uh, hidden chest. They're not really hidden, but most zones have a hidden chest. They're level locked. This one's level locked at 10, so you can't get it until you're level 10. But they, they, these chests do have nice experience bonuses. So when you open them up, you get a nice chunk of experience. This chest in particular, uh, when I came back, uh, actually gave me a pair of boots that had plus 6 run speed. They were just trashy gray boots, but they had plus 6 run speed. To me, run speed is king when you're low level and running slow and stuff like that. So, came back to town. Most of the quests are done. Now I'm just sorting out my loot. I'm going to sell what I don't need. I recommend filling up your loot uh, to maximum before you come back. I'm going to sell what I don't need. And I'm going to buy some of these pots. We had to run back here because I didn't have any money to buy these uh, port pots. So make sure you pick some up. Either to your bind or to the city. Uh, I prefer the city, uh, just because I feel like buying's kind of redundant. Now, just another warning, when you're right-clicking all of these and mass-selling them, make sure you do not sell the quest item, the little girl's doll. I did this, and, you know, my first day and a half playing this game, I was running around trying to figure out where to, how to get that doll, because I didn't realize I destroyed it. And uh, I think I was, like, level 30 or 35 before I even figured it out figured out how to re I had to remake a character do the quest again get the doll stick it in my bank and then pick it up with my main character and finish the quest you are going to want to drag your potions down to these six little boxes here um, I do heal mana and then on the bottom I put my ports um, there are no hotkeys for these in the game yet so you still have to click them but you know it's just easier than going in your inventory and clicking them and then after I sell all the junk I'm going to hit my bank drop everything that I don't need off into it, maybe for later for an alt, or maybe to stick on my shop and sell. Um, Low-end gear, even masterwork gear, doesn't really sell for a lot because you replace it so fast. But once you start getting into like your 20s, gear is a little more rare, um, and you can start selling it for the low thousands, like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So our next stop is a swing by the little girl. We're gonna give her her doll. She gives us some information. Now we got to go talk to the guy in the library. Uh, while we're in the library, which I just ported there because I don't feel like running. And it's only 250 gold to port. Uh, we're going to hand that in the AI. The very first quest we got. Get credit for that. We're going to go into the library. Now you'll see this guy has a quest here. This is the main quest line. Now you could argue we should have came back to AI, handed that in, gotten this main quest line, then went to the forest. 
because he sends us back to kill some of those little uh, slimes. Still not high enough level for the mercenary mission board yet. You got to be 20. So we head back to the old man here to tell him about what we learned about the little girl who wanted a doll. He then tells us that he wants to know about the girl's parents. Uh, but right here is where on the Nump quest line a lot of people miss. And it was very hard for me to find it out. Uh, I think somebody ended up telling me after hours and hours and hours of looking. Is this bookcase right here? You just have to, you know, interact with it. And uh, you get information on him, and it tells you the secret passcode that you need to select, which you really don't need to know it, but that's it. Talk to the man, hit the bookcase. The bookcase is key for Nump. If you wanted to shortcut everything, I would recommend that you forget about doing all the other quests since you don't have a companion. Go right to Nump, come right back down to this bookshelf, and then uh, get the information and go back and get Nump. Okay, so we just head back to the forest to finish up the quest lines. And I just wanted to show you something about the PvP. If you click open PvP, you can change your settings. Aggression to only enemy factions, aggression to your own factions, or friendly duels. Um, don't select any of them, and you kind of keep out of PvP a little bit. People can still attack you if they have their set to enemy or same. But it'll prevent you from accidentally attacking them with like your pets and stuff. So we want to make a V-line right to Nump, or as I like to call him. Um, just want to talk to him and then he'll, you can understand his text now. Um, so you just want to hit, I think it's the third one down. Third one down, yep. Yeah. And then uh, you'll talk to him, you'll get the second part of the quest. And then we have to go back down to the house. So from here, it's pretty straightforward. There's no more, like, weird hidden things. Um, this guy wants you to get three pieces from little mini-bosses on the map. Um, and then that's it. So it's, it's, uh, I guess the hidden part is where are the mini-bosses at. So, um, I showed you one earlier. Um, let's go back down and take a look. So just south of Gump here is this guard. Um, this is about the little girl's parents. So you talk to him, he continues the quest. And he wants you to defeat 20 uh, Yoka, I guess they're called, the little uh, raccoon looking guys. So this works out well, so what we'll do is just head down to the south. Uh, we gotta go up and then uh, past Nump, and then down past the house and across the bridge. And in the southern area are where the two little mini bosses spawn, so one is actually right here. Um, his name is Yotini, I think. Um, but when, you, when you're fighting them, they have higher hit points. Yeah, he's right there next to me. I didn't even see him. So you kill him, and he has a chance to drop the stuff for the quest um, that you need um, to get Nump, knowing Nump. So he just dropped the coat for me, and I had already previously had the sword, so I still need the flask. So if we go just north a little bit, um, we're going to see a guy beating on the next mini boss right in front of me. Uh, it's actually a hammer class. I forget the name of the class. I just call them hammer guys. Uh, but they're a pretty pretty good class. They're one of the um, not free, but ones you can pick for free. Um, but that's the guy right there. That's the little mini boss. Or named, I should call him. Poporoow. Poporoow. God, these names are difficult. Uh, but anyway, he's killing him. He spawns right in this area where I'm at now. So I farm a few more of them. And then this guy, this one here, drops the grass flask that I need. And then that's it. Now, once you have all three items, you can go get fruit. Also, if you go into the next zone over into the mushroom area, they also drop the, I think, the sword and the coat. I don't know about the grab class, but you can get some of these items from the mushroom area. Just in case there's a lot of people here farming and you're having a hard time getting these two spawns. But the respawn is, is extremely fast. Um, so make sure you don't sell them or destroy them by accident. You got the sword, the coat, and the flask. Go up and get Nump. So just head up north, back over the bridge, over to the house. Do the uh, quest turn into the hunter. You're giving him the uh, items you just got. And now we're going to head over and you finally get your Nump companion. So since I already have Nump, the card that I get in my inventory, you just... If, for you, you just click it, and then, and then Nump goes into your inventory, or goes to your account, 
Uh, for me, I eat it and it gives me points used to train the nump. So it says you already have a companion. When you click on it, it's just going to give you the companion. You hit your, uh, U on your keyboard and then select your companion. Um, but for me, it gave me points. So I'm going to hit U and then click on my nump. Go to info. And you can see where it says 5x. That allows me to improve him along with some gold or uh, Thomas or whatever it's called. And that's how you level up your pets and get some improvement. Uh, as you can see, this guy's already, he comes at level 3. So he, he now needs 10 fragments. So I guess you're going to have to get him to drop, you know, twice, two more times to upgrade him again. Um, so that you can see how the game kind of gets a little grindy with leveling pets and stuff like that. Um, so go back talk to the soldier here about the parents um, So you did the quest that he wanted you to do you killed some dudes um, So now we just have these two quests to turn in um, So we're gonna port back to town In here we turn the quest in to the uh, main quest line giver every 10 levels So 10 20 30 40 50 you're gonna come he's gonna unlock a new zone that you can go to and do like a quest line I think we're ready for our next one, actually. So he sends us off to help uh, a person. And that's kind of usually how it goes. He goes to help. He goes, here, go help a person. And then you have to find that person in one of the nearby uh, zones. And just like you can improve your companion by spending, uh, you know, the companion parts or whatever and money, you can do the same thing for your avatars, your characters. It costs money and, I guess, Arkin, it's called which you get uh, from doing quests and stuff like that. So we turn in a quest, and I want you to watch something here because this is a valuable lesson and something I keep forgetting to do. When you turn in a quest, you go back, you talk to him again. See, he still has a quest for me, and I just left. I'm so used to games rolling you into the next quest that you don't have to activate them again. You do with this game. Um, so when you hand in a quest and the dialogue goes away, just hit your key again and try to activate them again. Try to talk to them, see if they have anything else. Um, you know, the big exclamation point should be uh, a big indicator that I keep missing for whatever reason. All right, so now we need to help uh, Aris, and that's the person over here by the hunter. Um, we just talked to them. They want us to kill some boars, so it's boar hunting time. And the boars are right here, so easy. Just talk to her, kill the uh, 15 boars, and then talk to her again. And then she tells you to kill Yannicka, which is, um, you just go up by, uh, Groot, and then past the guard, past where the fungus mushroom place is, and this is actually the boss of the zone. He's non-aggro until you attack him, uh, but he's pretty tough, so, uh, make sure you come prepared. Uh, he does have a lot of hit points. For me, you know, I'm twinked out, it's not that big of a deal. You should be okay, but the bosses can get tough. I forget how tough the first boss actually is. Um, if you notice, he, um, drops this stuff right here, lemon, whatever, starts with a T. Um, if you want to farm him, go ahead and do that. You need 20 of them later, for later anyway. So, if you want to farm him now while he still gives you decent XP, feel free to do that and collect 20 of them. So, we just head back to the house and hand this quest in real quick. And now our quest to help... Uh, Eris is now turned into a quest to help Gus. So we have, then this is where it gets a little confusing. So we gotta go into the mushroom uh, area over here, but uh, this is where quest lines can get confusing when you're not familiar with them. You'll have a quest line, you'll do it, you'll turn it in, and then you'll get a secondary quest line asking you to help somebody. And then you'll talk to them and they'll ask you to help somebody else or do another quest. And then you gotta kind of remember, like, okay, that quest leads to this quest leads to that quest, right? So you'll have like multiple tiers. Um, and that's that's where a lot of new players can get a little confused, especially if they're not reading through the quest line or they got uh, tons of quests. Um, it can be a little confusing. Now this part, when you're trying to talk to these guys, this drives me nuts. Um, they have them so close to each other, you can't tell who you're interacting with. And that's actually a problem in a lot of areas, trying to access the bank. There's another part in this zone where you gotta talk to a soldier and there's another soldier next to him. I walked around literally for an hour and a half going, I cannot do this quest because I was interacting. I thought I was interacting with both of them, but I was only interacting with one. Um, so it made me not, like, I was like, what is this quest bug? Is it broke? Um, so when you're 
interacting with uh, these guys, just make sure you're interacting with the correct ones. All right, so we're getting close to the 30-minute mark here. Um, I'm not going to finish all the quests for this zone. Uh, basically, you talk to all the soldiers. One of them needs you to kill the boss. There's a big mushroom boss up at the top of the map. Um, feel free to farm that boss, because he also drops orange, just like the other boss dropped lemons. This guy drops orange stuff, and you need 20 of those. You need 20 lemons, 20 orange. So if you want to sit there and farm him, he's a really quick respawn. Feel free to do that. Um, the gear in this zone is unique, so every zone has unique gear that drops. It's like the next tier of gear, so this is like level 25 gear that's dropping in this zone. So while you're in here fighting, doing quests, you're also farming gear. You want to get some green drops, maybe some masterpieces, and uh, equip it. And every zone's like that. Every zone has its own gear set. Every zone has its own uh, quest set. So you'll get the main quest will drive you to the zones uh, that are level appropriate. And then within them, you'll have two or three additional quests within that zone. And then the mobs in there, the NPCs can drop um, items that are specific to that zone. Usually a couple weapons, a couple different weapon types, and a full set of armor, uh, specific armor to that zone. Um, so yeah, just I think... I think this, like, you should have a pretty good idea how the game's designed and how to do the quests and how it's going to lead you along. Um, you know, so hopefully this guide was helpful to you. Um, now, I, I do want to, one more thing I want to do a guide on, and that's the cash shop again. So, um, I found out some more information on how to acquire these items in game. There's been some changes uh, since we've been communicating. We, meaning like the community, have been communicating with the developer, you know, expressing our concerns about the uh, cost that he set the cash shop on. So let me get into that real quick. All right, so the cash shop, right? I reviewed it in my other video a little bit. Uh, I actually spent a good deal of time on it, about 10 minutes, but I wanted to just, re I wanted to re-review it. That's hard to say, re-review it. Um, so some changes have been made, right? So, um... If you go to purchase wing points, let's see, yeah, they're they're dollar for dollar, right? They're dollar for points, so each point's one one wing. Uh, December eighteenth, the developer announced he's going to give a twenty five percent bonus uh, to the NA servers uh, permanently. He's just adjusting the prices, so um, instead of thirteen, you're going to get twenty five percent more. So whatever that is, um, so you're going to get twenty five percent more wings per your purchase. Uh, so that's nice, but it's still, to me, that's still pretty expensive. Um, I heard a rumor that these subscriptions are going to be lowered. Um, he's going to change the 15-day uh, subscription is at $13 right now. I heard, and I, I didn't hear it from the developers, but I heard from other players that they were talking, and they might be changing the 30-day subscription down to 13 so when you factor in that if 30 is going to be now 13, that's a much more reasonable instead of $20 a month. Still a little high uh, for what you get. You don't get full access to the game. You get a run speed increase, can access the bank anywhere, experience increase, loot gain increase, uh, coin increase, Tamas, which is going to help with unlocking things anyway. But it's a lot better. And then factor that in when you're getting 25% more. So it's really putting it closer to what, like, um, I'm not doing the math, I'm just going to make an estimate, maybe like a 10 or $11 uh, dollars per month, which that's pretty reasonable for a subscription uh, in, a, in a decent game. Uh, it's still a little high, I think, but uh, much more reasonable. Um, but what I found out about the uh, avatars, so these are the classes, right? So I just, the one I was playing just now was this girl. Or this this one, Oja Ophelia, is the one I was just playing. Um, I actually traded that. Uh, I I traded some gold and items to a player in game, and he bought this. I guess he had some wings, wing points, and he bought it and gifted it to me. Uh, I I didn't even know you could gift things to people, so that was pretty cool. So that's why I decided to do the new tutorial since I had a new character. I could get the footage. Um, that's kind of why I did that. So thanks, thanks to him for giving me a really good deal on that. Like this guy, you know, probably is, you know a whale or whatever, 
and he was just looking to get in-game gold so he could buy gear, so he could twink his character out really good, I think. Anyway, what I found out about this is, so, you know, I didn't really elaborate. You can buy it with wing points, which is like cash, uh, or you can buy it with this stuff. It's called Popo something. I just call it Popo points. Um, you get 25 for free every now and then as a daily login, uh, or you can buy them from a vendor. So you get 10 of these from a vendor for 100,000 gold. And that sounded like a lot when I first started. I was like, holy crap, 100,000 gold. But what I realized is as it's actually not hard to make that when you're higher level. When you're in your 60s and 70s, it is not hard at all to make 100,000 gold. Just by grinding mobs, yet alone getting drops from bosses and selling them to other players. Um, the the limit to me now isn't the gold. The limit is you can only buy 10 of these a day from the vendor. The vendor will only sell you a, a stack of 10 for 100,000 once a day. So 10 or, or uh, 250 divided by 10, that's every 25 days. You, you it's, it's gate kept by that. Uh, time restriction so it's every 25 days you can get an avatar um, not to mention you're getting 25 every once in a while maybe once or twice a week from your daily logins so that that's going to reduce it a lot so maybe every two weeks you can unlock a new character if you're playing every day which really isn't that bad because you can't level a character up in two weeks like you can two weeks you can get a character like a new player uh, is going to get their first character to like level 50 within two weeks. An experienced player can blast through some stuff and get it done in a week. Um, these are just estimates. They don't argue with me about the time frame, but I just wanted to kind of give an idea of what it's like. So the cash shop in reality isn't that bad because you, you can earn it all in game. And like, that's one of the comments I made to the, uh, to the developer was, um, why do you have it set up like that, that the prices are so high, you make people want to get it for free, and then it's actually not that bad to get it for free. So it's like, to me, you should lower your prices and make people want to just fast track it and buy it. Um, but it is good that he, ha on the back end, like, that's the communication he wants to kind of put out, I think, is like, look, you know, it's it's not a ripoff. You can get it in game for free. You know what I mean? Like it's expensive, yeah, but that's if you just want to fast track it and you don't want to grind it out in game. But it's not hard. The companions are a little bit harder, right? So you gotta they're almost twice as hard, or four hundred each. Um but usually you pick a companion or two. You can only have one active at a time. And there's that dragon that everybody uses, right? Uh, it's it seems to be powerful and uh it regens your life. Um but you know you're 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 not going to really need all these. You're just going to need one or two of them for different scenarios. Um, so the gas shop isn't as bad as I originally thought it was. Um, as a new player, when you jump into the game, you're like, "Holy crap!" You know, it's so much. But I think the developer actually listened. He's trying to lower the prices. He's trying to make things a little more reasonable. Um, I don't like XP scrolls. I don't like RNG boxes. But it, you know, it's a free-to-play game. This isn't bad. This isn't that pay to win. The RNG boxes are actually kind of crappy. I wouldn't recommend them. But, um, you know, uh, if he does drop this, I might actually just sub. You know what I mean? I don't mind. I love sub sub based games. I don't mind. Uh, I just wish you'd have access to all these. Um, but I think I'll have these eventually. If you play for a few months, you're going to have all these unlocked anyway and some companions of your choices and what have you. Um, did he drop that collector's bundle? Was that two hundred and eight dollars? I think he might have dropped that already. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so I just wanted to kind of review this. Uh, what I learned from a mid midpoint level. So like my guys only like in the fifties. Um, you know, there, there's guys in the seventies and eighties right now. I think on the server. So, um, it, it gets a lot easier as you get higher. You get more coins when you defeat mobs. You get better loot that you can sell. So. It's not exactly too crazy to play this game absolutely free. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Um, I think I might have been a little too harsh on my first review of the uh, cash shop um, and with the dev listening to the community because the community was like, whoa, that's too much money. 
and you know he's kind of listening and trying to adjust it um to make it more uh suitable and for all you european players out there he has plans he did announce that he has plans of putting a european server out soon so i don't know when uh you might want to jump in discord if you're interested in that and ask but um yeah so that's it i hope you enjoyed it and, and you know the cash shop is here to support his development of this pretty cool game i i think this is a gem in the rough uh, i think a lot of people are going to like this game and it has a lot of potential um kind of like me kind of like my channel it's a gem in the rough it has a lot of potential so as Cash Shop support the game, so does your likes and your subscriptions support my channel. So if you uh, do like this channel, do like this content, uh, you like this video, click the buttons you need to click to help support me. And I appreciate it. Okay, so class review. Now, first, full disclosure. I have not played every class. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm regurgitating information from hours and hours and hours of reading material from uh, in Portuguese to talking to uh, some knowledgeable Portuguese players or people who played on the other server and just discussing classes with the uh, other people. Um, so I kind of got a good feel for classes, so I can maybe give you a little bit of guidance of what you're getting into. Um, I guess let's start with... Uh, the blue faction so there's two factions right lotos and lilia so i'm just gonna call them red and blue and red so on the blue faction you have each avatar they're called avatars but we're gonna call them classes um you have a male and a female version so i'm not going to go into both because as you can see like um the male versus female it's like three dip spells different right so yeah there's three there so it looks like there's three abilities or spells that are different between them that give them just a little bit of difference so i'm not going to get into that i'm just going to go down and do the what they call breeds so this is their breed or their race um and then this is their name so loopy and anna so you might have somebody say a, a root um or however you pronounce that when they're talking about a class but you don't know if they're talking about rose or august right so um when you start you can pick rows uh, i'm not gonna get into that you got five different ones that you could pick into i'll try to say them when i go down them so these you start with these are healers they're casters so imagine a wizard or a mage mixed in with a cleric and that's what these guys are they have uh range damage they can heal and they can res so that's these two um these are tanky dps um, one of the better classes, both of them, are one of the better classes for, like, uh, PvE, like, soloing bosses and stuff like that. I think any, in this game, I think the way it's designed, any tank class is going to have an easier time standing up to a boss, because bosses hit hard at higher levels. And then if their abilities scale with gear, that's even better, because gear, eventually, you know, it's not about levels. Uh, it's about gear giving you better stats, and if you have better gear and your abilities scale with that gear in a way like more, let's just say like more percentage based or something like that, then they'll scale better. So some classes scale better with gear. I think this is one of them they're saying uh, out of like five. This is one of them that scale well because again, a tanky class. So this is more of a t this is like an actual tank. You can jump in and take damage for your party and stuff like that. Um. And then you have your archers. The, the the what I'm hearing, and this is one of the free ones you can pick. This is a paid one that's free if you pick her. What I'm hearing is the archer isn't that good in endgame. Um, everybody's kind of dismisses up dismissive of them. I see people playing them; they seem alright, but uh, they have a poor reputation. Uh, this class is one of the free ones. I think you pick the guy. I don't know which. I don't know if the guy or the girl. Um, but this is a free one that you can pick uh, out of the five. And this is pretty good. Again, it's a tanky DPS. Um, so, you know, um, decent uh, at tanking bosses. This guy strikes me as pretty decent in PvP, too, because uh, he has lots of stuns. And let's scroll down. What else do we got? And then the guns. 
Uh, guns, I think they're decent. DPS is what I've heard. Um, they look cool, definitely look cool. But both on the red faction gun, which is this person, and the blue, I've heard they're okay. They're like nothing great. They're good DPS. They're solid. Uh, good, good choices. Uh, same with these little monks. Decent. Nothing spectacular. Kind of middle of the road, but they're good class. They're, they're not a poor class. They don't like uh, do anything, or they're not a bad class to pick. Uh, I heard these little samurai classes um, are good um, for bossing, for PVE, and decent for PVP. Uh, so and they're free. So this is a free class. This is a free class. So you got um, you got a good pick here. And you don't even have to waste your uh, free, um, your one of five that you get to pick. Um, you can pick something else. So you can always fall back on this if you want to do a melee or something else. Um, the Rogue, uh, absolute worst at PvE. Um, but some high-end uh, Brazilian players were saying they can actually do, do bosses pretty well somehow. I don't know. But everybody else that I talked to said these are the worst PvE, but, as it should be, right? Worst PvE stealth class. They are the best at PvP. You know, they're, they're very hard to beat. They are top-tier PvPers. Um, these are your summoners. Uh, they're very good starter classes. Very powerful. You can take a level 30 summoner and his pet, you can just send your pet onto a level 40 boss. And it'll just kill the level 40 boss and not even take any damage. It's, it's so People are complaining that they're so OP. Um, they want them nerfed. But on the, on, the, on the other side, when they get higher levels, 60, 70, 80, they flatten out. They're not horrible, but you're, you're mediocre. You're no longer OP at higher levels. And you have these crazy pets that have bad AIs and you can't control anything. And they're horrible in PvP. Um, they get one-shotted, um, you know, and you're relying on pets and AIs that are pretty unresponsive. So, overall, really great first-class choice, and I think the girl, is it the guy? It's the guy, I think, is the free choice, um, or the one of five. It's a paid, but you get one of five free, and this is one of them. So, very good beginner class. Uh, gun class already went over. Um, these are like the healers of the red faction. They have one single heal and one res. So there's no real healers in this game. Um, it's more like support, DPS support. And again, these are like, um, you know, casters with a heal and a res. And this is what I was playing in my demo. I just got this one. And this is a fully paid one. You can't get these without paying for them. And then you got your... Uh, your your dragoons, um, I think he looks cool. I would put the where's that at? I would put that on him. That would be my dude right there. I think she looks freaking awesome too. I think I'd leave the blonde hair on her. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think these guys are good. Not you know okay in PvP, okay in PVE. So that's kind of the classes. Uh, is that all of them? That's that's basically it. So you have your your caster healers. You have your various melee, pure DPS, tanky DPS, tanks, ranged. Um, to me, it feels like anything tanky is stronger end game. Anything uh, ranged or healer is weaker end game. And of course, the summoners are very strong early game, average or mediocre late game. So uh, I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video, and again, subscribe, give me a like, help support uh, my channel. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.